Okay. I guess I'm going to talk about anger today and some things that I am angry about because yes, I am angry. I'm angry about some of the things that are going on in our world today. I'm angry at the way some of the things are working. And that's why I'm coming back here to YouTube when I had given up in the past and I had stopped making videos. I'm coming, I'm returning back to this because what I've realized is that my story is important and my story can actually help someone who was in my position when the system failed me. And I'm not the only one it's failing. It's failing many, 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 many other people in many different ways. And this is not a bash on doctors, nurses, anyone who works in the healthcare system. We've seen how dedicated and, and the strength that these people have to push through adversity over the last few years and work in conditions that are unimaginable for a lot of us other people on the other side. So this is not in any way trying to generalize and say that the individuals who practice medicine are in some way bad or dishonest or evil or have bad intentions whatsoever. What I am talking about is the fact that if I go to the, through the system that we currently have, there, there is no, there was never an experience that I had where anyone treated me holistically. No one asked me about my diet. No one asked me about emotional trauma. No one asked me about my mental health. No one asked me about anything else that could be related to the symptoms that I was experiencing. The knee-jerk reaction is to, oh, you have these X, Y, and Z symptoms. Here is the matching prescription drug that goes to those symptoms. Here is your prescription. Take this. Come back in a year or whatever the time frame might be. Or, oh, Let's do some tests. You need surgery to remove a piece of your anatomy because there's something wrong with that piece of your anatomy. That's what would have happened to me if I would have gone in and searched through a bunch of different specialist doctors, spent all kinds of money and time and going through the rigmarole of insurance. Have you ever talked to anyone? Have you ever known anybody that works in insurance? It's a nightmare. It is an absolute nightmare to try to get things approved. Everything has to be like documented in a specific way so that you can get covered for X, Y, and Z treatment that you may or may not even need. Or if there's something that you want to explore, you have to jump through all these hoops in order to even get your insurance to cover that for you. Like the whole thing is a nightmare. And again, not talking about the individuals. The individual people are hardworking, dedicated, smart people that care about other human beings. For the most part, that's what I believe. But what I am trying to point out through my healing journey is that the way in which we treat and look at diseases is not serving a giant majority of our population. And I think that's pretty evident if you open your eyes and walk out of your space into anywhere where there's a lot of people. Why do I come in contact with more people who are sick, who have a chronic condition, who can't get in control of their relationship with food, who can't get in control of their relationship with substances, who can't get in control with their relationship with social media. We are surrounded by addictive stimulus and overstimulation all the time. And it, that's just the way the world is. And so when I'm trying to express in as respectful of a way as I can, my position about what is going on here, that is all I'm trying to do. I'm trying to say, look, we need to open our eyes to the fact that we are sicker and, and more obese and have more chronic conditions and are in worse shape than we've ever been. We are so far removed from nature. We are so far removed from how we, our bodies are designed to eat and to move and to be in relation to one another. This is why I harp on social media all the time, is because this is not a natural conversation. I can't read the inflection in your comments. I can't read and know for sure exactly what everyone means by what they write in the comments, and neither can you. The only way you can get a true sense of what I'm saying is by watching me right now on a screen, hearing my voice and watching my facial expressions and looking at my body language and hearing the inflection in my voice. And so that, that puts a spin on everything that we do as far as relationships in this world. 
And this all connects. And this is why I get upset. And this is why I get frustrated and angry sometimes because I see the bigger picture. I see the bigger picture. And this world of diet and health and nutrition is one subsect of the bigger picture that I see happening. And it's the degradation of our society. It's the degradation of us as human beings because you know what? We don't trust each other anymore because all we see is online comments from people we don't really know. And we think that those are relationships. All we see in the store is buy this, buy that. You need this. You need this new kind of Coke. You need this new kind of chips. I, I take my child to the park and I watch children younger than her She's three, almost three and a half. Little tots who can barely, have just barely learned to walk, walking around with bags of Doritos in their hands. And their mom's giving them a sip of their Mountain Dew through a straw. Okay, this is, this is the world that we're in right now. And I realize that there's people outside of it. And I realize that there's lots of people that don't do that or feed those things to their children. But there's a lot of people that do. And again, disclaimer, not a moral judgment, not judging these people as their worth of human beings or anything else. But what I am saying is the objective reality that we, that I'm seeing in the world right now is that we are sick and people need help. And the advice we're being given and the, the hoops and the rigmarole and the approvals and denials of insurance and claims and money and everything, like none of that is working for people. And it makes me angry. It makes me angry when I see more and more people who I love and care about, and for privacy reasons, I don't give details about any of that stuff, but more and more people now that I know and love or have loved in my life have been had their lives ruined. They've had their lives ruined in one form or another where they, now they can't work, or now they can't have a normal relationship, or now some part of their body's been removed that they can't get back because of a lack of understanding and a lack of application of preventative health measures that are simple, like changing your diet, that are simple, like getting out in the sun. We are meant to be in the sun. We are meant to eat a whole foods, animal-based diet. And you don't have to agree with me. Everyone is free to have their own opinion, but that's what I believe to be true based on my experience and watching other people in my life suffer. And I'm tired of watching it. I'm tired of watching people that I love and care about suffer and degrade and degenerate before their time because they're being given the wrong advice. They're being given bad advice. I'll say it a third time, not out of maliciousness, not out of evilness or bad intention, but because it's been passed down now because we are a part of a system that does not know or, does not, or chooses not to know. I don't know which one it is how to prevent chronic diseases, how to prevent people from living in pain every single day of their lives, how to prevent people from being so overweight and not being able to control that and torturing themselves, trying to cut their calories while, while they've never been told, they've never been introduced to the idea that the type of food that they eat matters. Okay, you can go on the American Diabetes Association website and find tons of recipes that they recommend to people who are type 2 diabetics that are full of sugar and carbohydrates. And you might say, oh, look at the nutrition facts. There's only 27 grams of carbs in this recipe. Yeah, for a half a cup. Who eats a half a cup of apple crisp? Who eats a half a cup of brownie bites or trail mix? Who eats two tablespoons of trail mix? I don't know anyone that eats two tablespoons. So I don't, I don't understand the argument of everything, you know, that, the, that I should just be participating in this dysfunctional system of health care. I don't understand that argument. Clearly, when I open my eyes and look, that is not working. It's not working for people. And when I say something has to change, that's what I mean. It means that we have to take the power back into our own hands. We have to stop listening to these mega, giant, multinational, global corporations telling us what we need to eat, which is their products. We need to stop listening to every single thing that 
giant, mega, industrial, multinational, global pharmaceutical companies tell us we need to do or put in our bodies without thinking it through first, without actually going back and saying, did these people tell us the truth? Or did they just tell us what, we, what they wanted us to hear so that we would comply? We need to stop just blindly accepting everything that comes out of the USDA for the Food and Nutrition Guidelines for Americans without going back and say, how did they come up with these? Where did this come from? And what might have contributed to that? And if I'm following all of these things that all these expert leading, super important organizations are telling me to do, but yet I'm still sick, but yet I still am fatigued, but yet I still have brain fog that's akin to some kind of mental illness that I still can't get out of bed and have enough energy to operate for six hours in a row at the age of 25, then maybe that's bad advice. Maybe there's something wrong with that advice. And maybe I shouldn't follow that advice. That is the point that I'm trying to get across. And again, I'm not coming, coming here to say, to beat up on everybody or to say that anybody who works in healthcare or the USDA is a bad human. That is not what I am saying. What I am saying, and I will repeat it again, this is not working for people. We would not be this sick. We would not be this tired we would not be needing all this caffeine and red bull and supplements and all this kind of stuff if there wasn't a problem and some of the problems we can't deal with we live in a modern world there's pollution everywhere there's pollution in everything we don't have the water that we used to have like yeah sometimes we need a supplement or sometimes we need a certain thing to get us through or to just provide for something that we just don't have access to in any other way but what I am seeing is not the, the occasional use of supplements as a therapeutic means or as a means of getting through to getting off of them. What I am seeing is more and more pills being piled into the handful of medicines that people are relying on every single day of their lives in order to function. And I personally believe that that is a problem. I personally believe that that is not going to help human beings over the long run. So yes, yes, I am angry about it. And that's what makes me want to make YouTube videos again and share my story and share my opinions and beliefs about this because I think that, that that's what helped me. That's what ended up helping me in the end. And that's what helped lead me to the diet that I'm on right now is hearing other people's stories who had suffered like I did. Hearing other people's stories who had maybe something completely different than what I had but had a similar experience of going to their doctor and saying, you know, my doctor told me that he was supposed to tell me this set of information, this check all of these boxes, but then he or she kind of slipped me something over here and said, here's something you might want to read. Here's something you might want to look up in case you are curious. And there are a lot of doctors who are doing that now. I see this state of disease that we're in, in general, as a population, as a sign of something bigger. It's a sign that we are easy to control. When we are weak, when we're tired, when we have no motivation or, or purpose or passion in our lives, when we're consumed with just trying to get by every day, trying to just oh, take, make sure I take everything that I'm supposed to take and, and it's not even really doing anything and now I have all these side effects that I have to go get more drugs for to be managed for this and this and that. We don't know what all those things do really when you start piling on one thing after the other, which is, again, what would have happened to me if I would have gone through the traditional system of care that I've watched other people that I know go through. And that was the result. And so I will be honest, there is a part of me that did not want to pursue that path specifically. And so that is the reason that I've ended up where I am today. But I think this is all part of and you can call this a conspiracy theory if you want you can go right ahead and call it a conspiracy theory because you know what at the end of the day I don't have any solid proof to back up what I'm about to say but I think that if you look in throughout 
all different areas of things that are happening right now, this is the goal. The goal is to keep us weak. The goal is to keep us from standing up for what we believe in, what we believe to be true. The goal is to keep us sick and dependent and scared and confused. And I just listened to an interview the other day. By the way, you can go listen to Callie Means, C-A-L-L-E-Y-M-E-A-N-S on Dr. Barry's channel. He used to contract for Coca-Cola and big food companies. And he talks about his experience in that video about what these companies' motives are. Okay, they don't care about you. They care that you keep buying their stuff. And they don't care if it's healthy or not. But the point why I brought it up is because he talks about how these companies just do nutrition research. They fund nutrition research just to have more stuff out in there, to keep us confused, to keep us questioning what we just read on, in a different study or in a different article or a couple of years ago about, oh, this is now unhealthy and this is now healthy. It's not about doing nutrition research to further our understanding or to further our our treatments or to further our, you know, benevolence as, as food producers. It's about let's keep people so confused and unsure about what the truth really is that they'll just believe anything, that they'll just eat whatever we tell them to eat and drink whatever we tell them to eat. And that's why I get upset with the words moderation and the words balance because those words don't mean anything. They are subjective. Okay. What's moderation for me could be completely different to the person sitting next to me. And that sub that subjective interpretation of balance and moderation could be completely different to the person sitting on the other side of me. So when, when a healthcare provider who's supposed to be an ally, a teacher, someone who has wisdom, and then they're working with you and you're working together, in order to solve your health problems. When a healthcare provider says, well, just eat in moderation. Well, okay, what does that mean exactly? How much of this thing that's making me sick should I tolerate? What is the, benef the net benefit for me? Well, nobody has an answer for that. You can check out Dr. Chafee's channel if you want to learn more about that. He's got some great arguments on there that I think are very hard to argue with. And so what I'm trying to get to is, is the idea that my belief is, and you can go ahead and call me crazy if you want, but I think that the nutrition, the, the fact that we are sick and unhealthy and, and it's getting worse is part of a plan to keep us from standing up for what's right to keep us from being strong individuals that can come together and fight back against anything, period. No, it doesn't matter what it is. That's how you control a population of people. You keep them dependent on you for everything they, that you need, okay? You keep them dependent on your systems the way that you set them up so that people can't get outside of them. That's why big food and pharma and medicine and insurance and all this stuff are connected. And then policy at the top, or at least the top of what we see. And I'll say it a fourth time in case anyone missed it. I'm not here to shame anyone. I'm not here to tell anyone that they're bad or they're wrong or they're whatever. I'm saying I've been in your shoes. I have been so confused and so misguided and, and told things by people that I looked up to as authority figures, people that I thought were intelligent and well-meaning and wanted my best, had my best interests in mind. And the advice that they gave me made me more sick and made me feel like I didn't want to get out of bed in the morning, that I didn't have a purpose for my life, that I could never accomplish any of the things that I dreamed about because of the physical condition that I was in. So yes, 
that makes me angry. I've let go of anger specifically that I have held on to in the past towards specific situations or individuals that were involved in that stuff. And I think that's where anger becomes destructive at the end of the day. If you get angry about something that happened in the past and you can't let go of the anger and every time you think about that situation, it makes it triggers you into that same emotional reaction, that might be something to work on. But the type of anger I'm talking about today is looking out in the present moment and being horrified in, in sometimes, in many cases, by what I am seeing and what I am hearing in the present day from other people who are currently suffering right now. Okay, that I, I don't have to care about them. I don't have to, you know, give a crap about their story. But that impacts me and it angers me because I see a different way out. And I see what the bigger picture is here, what I think the bigger picture is. It's all this is connected. And so that's why I'm speaking to my story again. And that's why I'm going to speak out about what I believe is a great solution for people who are in dire straits or for anyone, because I truly believe that a version of, of a ketogenic diet, whether that's keto with 50 grams of carbs, that could even be more for some people, depending on your activity level and your weight and height and your muscle mass and all that kind of stuff. But a proper human diet as coined by Ken Berry, Dr. Ken Berry, and you can go to his channel if you want more information, is something in the realm of a ketogenic to a carnivore diet. Some of us like me have to tighten it up to carnivore. That's just the way I am. And that's okay. Some people can be a little more fast and loose with the carbs. And that's perfectly okay too. But I don't think that saying that everything in moderation is a proper nutrition strategy to offer people in today's day and age when we know that that's just not true. And so that's the type of anger that I use and channel into action by doing something about what I'm feeling. And I think that anger is, is good. I don't think anger is inherently bad. I think anger is an emotion and a, and a signal from our body, just like every other emotion is. And it can be used in a non-productive and harmful way, but it can also be used in a very productive way. It can light a fire under someone's ass and say, you know what? I hit rock bottom, I've had enough, I'm going to change something in my life. And I care about other people and I want to help inspire and motivate other people who are sick and who want to get better, who want to learn about this way. That's a different way than what we've been taught. And so I hope that clarifies some things. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye.